Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is Behavior here again for another episode of Just My Opinion. So where this episode, we're going to talk about the box office results for the past weekend. And I know it has been two weeks since you guys have seen me for a box office. I missed last week uh, with Ocean's 8 hitting theaters. And I'm going to cover last weekend's box office, too. Uh, but I'm very excited. I have so much to talk about. We are going to talk about Ocean's 8. We're going to talk about The Incredibles, Black Panther, Star Wars, Tag, all the movies that came out. Superfly got a special uh, section. I'm going to talk about Superfly because there are so many strong opinions. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get into this, guys. So thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. So... Disney is doing great things again with the box office. They just had uh, The Incredibles 2 come out this past theaters. It has been 14 years waiting. If you want to see my reviews for the film, please subscribe to my channel and go check it out. I would really appreciate it. It's a great film. And uh, it shows it's a great film because it was advertised great, you know, great word of mouth. And it did a killing at the box office. The first, um, the first Incredibles Film. Let me get tell you how much that made at the box office opening the weekend. The budget for it was ninety two million dollars. Uh, the opening weekend was seventy million dollars, uh, which is very great. Uh, it was written and directed by Brad Bird too, and it opened at yeah, seventy million dollars. Incredibles two did more than double that with an actual number of one hundred and eighty two million six hundred eighty seven thousand nine hundred and five dollars that is what's up disney pixar congratulations to you it was in 4400 theaters uh, 4410 theaters to be exact so it was playing just about everywhere i think the most that i've ever seen a theater count be in my entire life is maybe like 45 or 4600 theaters with maybe around five thousand in the country worldwide not where i said in the country worldwide you know what i'm trying to say in the country so uh there you go uh, um, now, you know, estimations or estimations, it was estimates that uh, the film would definitely break 100 million and people were saying, OK, around 150 million dollars. That's what the tracking was coming out with. Uh, but it ended up blowing that away, coming in at uh, 182 million dollars. Uh, this is the biggest uh, Pixar opening of all time. Uh, this is also in the top 10 of all time for opening uh, for an opening for just period and also wait a minute yes the top 10 opening of all it's in the top 10 opening of all time and uh, it is also like i just said it's the highest pixar opening um as well now let me let me go ahead and just go over the top 10 openings of all time we know avengers infinity wars number one at 257 million star wars the force awakens 247 million number two the last jedi star wars 220 million jurassic world 208 million number five is marvel's the avengers 2012 207 million black panther whoop whoop 202 million coming in at number six Avengers Age of Ultron coming in at number uh, coming in at number seven at 191 and the Incredibles 2 is coming in at number eight at 182 million dollars the only thing that follows it right after that is Captain America Civil War at 179 and Beauty and the Beast uh, that came out last year um, at 174 million dollars so Incredibles 2 um, man um, top eight openings of all time can you tell that people were waiting for this movie and anticipating this movie and salivating at the mouth for this movie i was i mean excuse me 14 years is a very long time uh everybody was like dude everybody loved the first film you know and it made so much money why won't they make a sequel just like i said in my review of the film brad bird the writer and director who also did the first film, he was like, look, I don't want to just shoot out another crappy sequel, which some um, studios and production companies do. If I'm going to make a sequel to this, I do want it to be as good as the first or even um, or even better than the first. And some people may be like, well, Brandon, that doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, you know, that's that's a given. Anybody will want it to be as good as the last one or, or better. And no, that's just not the case. A lot of people really just don't care. And they're just out to make a buck. And that's unfortunate. But Brad Bird cares about the material. He cares about the fans. Uh, you know, he has integrity. Uh, it's not just about the money. Even though it is, this is a business, you know, he wants to make a good film. And he did that. Hopefully, we will we'll get a part three. Uh, hopefully, it won't take another 14 years. But if we do get a part three for The Incredibles, um, I do want it to... Um, 
I do want it to, uh, um, what am I trying to say here? I wanted to uh, go forward in time just a little bit because from the first film to the second film, it's like really one movie because the second film picks up right after the first one. Now, if you're going to compare The Incredibles 2 to, uh, actually, before I do that, let me just go over, let me not um, gush over The Incredibles 2 too much. Now, last weekend, um, Ocean's 8 was in theaters. Uh, I saw the film twice. I saw it before it came out. I saw, saw it this past, uh, what's today? I'm, I'm filming this Monday evening after work. I saw the uh, Ocean's 8 again for the second time uh, with my family because my dad wanted to see it for Father's Day. We actually celebrated Father's Day on Saturday and, um, you know, kind of just hung out at the house on Sunday. He just wanted to lay on his butt. I don't blame you, sir. I don't blame you. But Ocean's 8, it came through um, last month, not last month, last week at $41 million, um, for its opening weekend, which is great. That is the largest opening weekend for any of the pre previous Ocean's films. Um, I'm losing my cursor here. When I look at the showdown for all of the Ocean's films, uh, the budget, uh, the well, the most expensive one was actually 110 million by Ocean's 12, which was the second one. Um, where is Ocean's 8 here? Okay, so the budget for uh, Ocean's 8 was 70 million. It was 85 million for 11, 110 million for Ocean's 12, Ocean's 13. It doesn't show me right here. Um, but what am I looking for? Yeah, opening weekend. $41 million for Ocean's 8, Ocean's 11 had $38 million, Ocean's 12 had $39 million, and Ocean's 13 had $36 million. Now, if you want to adjust for inflation and things like that, um, the previous Ocean's 11 and 12, not the original from way back in the day, I'm talking about like, what, 2002, 2000, something like that. Well, the date should be right here. And yeah, 2001, excuse me, 2001, 2004. If you want to adjust for inflation... I think Ocean's 11 and 12 would be around like 50 million dollars, uh, you know, because that was over 15, 16, 17 years ago. So, of course, uh, you know, movie tickets are much uh, more expensive in 2018 opposed to 2004 and 2001. But uh, I do had to give uh, Ocean's uh, um, eight a credit or whatever, because, uh, you know, it, it does deserve that. Uh, last week, Solo came in at number two with 15 million. Deadpool number three at 14 million. Hereditary came in at number four, which opened last week at 13 million. I just didn't want to see that film, guys, because I'm just too scary. Uh, slasher films don't scare me, but some of the people were just like, man, B. Well, not me personally, just online. Just like, it's too many scary images that stick in your head. I don't need that right now in my life. Uh, maybe I'll get to it eventually in review, but, you know, I, I, I just... You know, I was like, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Avengers Infinity War came in at number five is seven million. And uh, Hotel Artemis, which released last week as well, came in at three million dollars. That was number eight. It was a great film. I think you guys should see that as well. Now, uh, just going back to this week, uh, what came in in the opening uh, the weekend? Like I said, Incredibles 2 came in at number one. Ocean's 8 is number two. It had a 54 percent drop. Um, that's not horrible. Um, that's okay. Um, eighteen million dollars at number two. Now, when I look at the showdown, I just closed that window too, and I knew I still needed it, but that's okay. I can just open up another one. I appreciate y'all's patience. Now, if you look at the showdown, I want to see what the second weekend was for um Ocean's uh, Eleven. So, Ocean's Eight won the first weekend out of Ocean's. 8, 11, 12, and 13. However, with Ocean's 8 getting $18 million, Ocean's 11 second weekend was $22 million, and Ocean's 12 was $18 million as well, like Ocean's 8, and Ocean's 13 was $19 million. So, um, you know, on the weekend uh, race, Ocean's 11 is winning the second weekend. If I wanted... Excuse me, I'm so sorry, guys. My apologies. If I wanted to look at the day-to-day, -day, uh, Ocean's 8 was beating all the other Ocean's films except for this past weekend where Ocean's 11 did come through on Friday and Saturday. So this past Friday, uh, Ocean's 8 had 5.9 million, but Ocean's 11 had 7 million. Saturday, Ocean's 8 had 7 million. Um, Saturday, Ocean's 12 had 9.5 million. So uh, that's that. It's doing a great job. Uh, we're going to see how much it makes. The budget is much cheaper than all the other films. All the other films were profitable out of the past three. Ocean's Eleven was the most successful, making the most money and costing the less. But, you know, we're going to have to see. Coming in at number three for this past week in this tag with Jeremy Renner, uh, Jake Johnson, Ed Helms, John Hamm, and uh, 
what is the other guy's name? Uh, Hannibal Burris. That came in at $14 million. I did see the film. You can also check out my review if you like. I thought the film was pretty decent, but you know, with a budget of $28 million, uh, it, this opening weekend was $14,947,396. Uh, it opened up overseas uh, as well, just in a few territories, making $1.5 million. And so, um, total worldwide, worldwide right now, it is at $16 million. And I'm just trying to pull up my calculator real quick because y'all know me and my rule of three when it comes to the budget. So, uh, TAG needs to make, in my opinion, at least $84 million to... Uh, make some type of respectable profit when you consider the 33% on average that goes to the theaters slash theater owners and the marketing budget as well. Um, I thought the film was okay. It could have been a lot better. Um, I think it was a little over exaggerated, but you know, it's a game called tag. It's based on a true story, but that came in at number three. Coming in at number four, Bombastic is a solo, a Star Wars story. It brought in $10 million. It dropped 36% from last week. Uh, right now, it is still in 2,200 theaters. Uh, did I look at that right? No, that's incorrect. It's at 3,100 theaters. Excuse me. I was like, I, that can't be right. Right now, globally, it is $340 million. That sucks because the film was probably $250 million, $300 million around for the production budget, which, golly, um, you know, no, no film should be that much in my opinion unless this is like Avengers 5 or something but we all know the story about that solo a Star Wars story is just not doing well at the box office Deadpool 2 coming in at number 5 in it's uh, fifth week of release and it's fifth week of release it's in number 5 at the box office it dropped 38% it's at 3200 theaters and uh, right now they brought in eight another 8.6 million dollars uh, Deadpool with that budget of 110 million dollars right now worldwide is at 689 uh, million dollars worldwide so uh, it is well into profit land right now it may um, should at least made a 330 million uh, if you times 110 by three for my rule of three and it's did that double so it's, it's well into uh, into profit land now um, when I look at the showdown for Deadpool 2 so Deadpool 2 is in its 31st day of release. Deadpool at this point in time, Deadpool 1 was at $328 million. Deadpool 2 is at $294 million. So what's about $35 million? It's not exact math. $35 million more. That's a lot, but you know, it's not a uh it's not a big, big margin. But at the same time, seeing the Deadpool 1 cost half the amount of money. Then um, the second Deadpool made, you know, that's just something to uh, think about. And how much how much did Deadpool make the first one overall? Well, I think it was like seven hundred something million. Yeah, seven hundred eighty three uh, million dollars. <coughs> excuse me, uh, worldwide. So, you know, that's that. But uh, real quick, coming in at number six is a uh, Superfly. We got to. <laughs> oh man, we got to talk about Superfly. I and I will in a second. Uh, Superfly came in at six point eight million dollars. Uh, 2200 theaters that's being put out by Sony. The budget was 16 uh, million dollars. I was about to say 16 dollars. Hereditary in week two uh, dropped 49 percent. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get back to Superfly. Uh, 6.8 million dollars. Avengers Infinity War number eight another 5.5 million dollars. A drift came in at number nine at 2.2 million dollars, and then number 10 uh, was Book Club coming in at 1.8 million dollars. The only other new film releases. Uh, that did not make the top 10 was Gotti and Race 3. I think last time I looked at Gotti online, that thing was like, uh, I think a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I was like, goodness gracious. And then I looked to see how many uh, people reviewed it because if it was just one person, it really, really just doesn't matter. It just means that one person didn't like it. So uh, where is Gotti at on her? It's a new release, so why is this not at the... And the movie sucks so bad, I guess, that they didn't even want to... Put it on the front page. I gotta search for this thing. Uh, this is a remake. Okay, I got you. God, dog. Yeah, it's still a zero percent. Man, twenty five people have reviewed this thing. Average rating is two point five out of ten. So, I guess that movie was just straight up trash. But uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's Gotti. So, uh, what's interesting? I don't know this, uh, guys. If you do, please comment below. Uh, a Wrinkle in Time made $1.6 million. Now, it's still a bomb, but it was a, it increased 1,551.4% at the box office. So, um, 
yeah if anybody has any insight on that um you know as far as why it got a, a uptick in uh, in um uh, uh theater count uh let me know hotel artemis is number 14 god god dog then nobody go see this movie man it was good too i wonder what the budget is because right now it's, it's it's only made five million dollars i hope it was cheap because this is a isn't this a uh isn't this a blumhouse production no let me see real quick this is horrible i almost didn't even talk about hotel artemis because it's so far down on the line i don't think this is blumhouse i know upgrade was but let's see real quick uh no no you got too many big actors in this for to be blumhouse this is uh I don't know what this is. Go. What is this? This is. Who is WME Global? UK. The the, the uh, distributor is Warner Brothers. Uh, okay. Well, um, it was a good movie. Got y'all go see it. Try to help it get some money. My goodness, it's doing horrible. Uh, Black Panther. Where you at? You down there? Black Panther is number twenty seven. This week, it brought in another $144,000. Now, you probably like, Brandon, why are you still talking about Black Panther? Because, man, it was one of my favorite movies of this year. Uh, another thing is, right now, domestically, this movie is at $699 million. $613,337. It is less than four hundred k away from hitting the milestone of $700 million. Now, I would go see it again in theaters myself. Uh, it's probably only at the dollar movie, but it's out on Blu-ray in 4K right now. So I just don't want to, uh, you know, waste my money like that. And people are like, no, waste the money. Well, they already got enough Disney and I'm not getting none of the profit. So it's only at $386,000 away. I'm around up $387,000 away from uh, reaching that milestone of 700K, not 700K, 700 million. And man, like, since I missed last week's box office too, there's just so much I want to talk about as well. Um, because let, let's, let's, let's do, okay, let me, uh, let me close this. Now, let me go back to, uh, Pixar and Disney. Now, high power, this showdown on box office mojo is high powered animated openers. Okay. So we have Finding Dory, Minions, Shrek the Third, Toy Story 3, and The Incredibles 2. Um, None of these films made on the three hundred million dollars domestically. Finding Dory is one of the game domestically at four hundred and eighty-six million dollars. Uh, so let's see if it reaches that uh, height. If you know, if it has legs, if it's going to be chopped in half, you know, who knows? Because we do have another Disney film coming out uh, on July fourth, which is Ant Man and the Wasp. And also, I believe this week is uh, Jurassic uh, Park uh, is coming out. Let me see here real quick. Uh, I'll, see, I hate when IMDb does that. Yeah, so uh, Jurassic World of Fallen Kingdom is opening this week. Uh, this is Monday evening. I, hopefully, I will see it tomorrow. If not, I will see it Wednesday. So, uh, you know, Jurassic World, man, that was a big blockbuster. Uh, was it in 2015? Making It made $1.6 billion worldwide and off the top of my head i think the opening was 208 million dollars i'll check that in a second but so uh incredibles 2 is gonna have some type of competition you know at the box office uh you know this coming week with uh i think sicario opens as well no uh, sicario opens a week after that but we got we got jurassic uh jurassic world coming out next week you know two big movies after another why is this why is this doing this? It's not doing what I want it to do. But let me see what's coming in after that. Coming out after that. Okay. What we got here? Coming soon. Yeah, so Sicario opens um, June 29th. I don't think that's going to hurt it too much. Um, Three Identical Strangers. My mom was telling me about that documentary. I need to go check it out. Uh, so nothing other than that, you know, we're going to be good the week after Jurassic, like the week of June 29th. But then come in July, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp and also the first purge, you know, yeah, go black people. And I will talk about why I said go black people when I talk about Superfly here in the second, because, oh, man, I got a lot of opinions 
in my uh, review for that. But going back to uh, the first high powered animated openers, now the budget for the it does, I don't see a budget for Fun and Dory. The budget for Minions was seventy four million. The budget for Shrek the Third was um, one hundred and sixty million. The budget for Toy Story Three was two hundred million, and the, there's not they don't have a budget listed on IMD not IMDb but Box Office Mojo for uh, Incredibles. But and I looked on the numbers.com the dash numbers.com. I didn't see it there. I don't like the source that I got my budget from. I'm embarrassed to add, I mean to tell y'all, but uh, it's my last go place. I don't care. I got it from Wikipedia. Um, I just don't feel comfortable with that budget. It could be crap. It could be real. Um, but anyway, Toy Story 3's opening was 110 million. Shrek was 121. Men's was 115. And Finding Dory was 135. These are the opening weekends and all of Disney Pixar films, the biggest. And then Incredibles 2, uh, blew that out of the water. And so, uh, you know, I just got to give it up to the Incredibles 2, um, you know, for doing, uh, such a great job. It was a great movie. I pl probably gonna end up seeing it again in uh, theaters. Uh, you know, if I get some time, but you know, we're just gonna have to see. Now, let's go back to let's talk about this movie, uh, Superfly. Okay, uh, because there's a lot of angry black people. Well, angry maybe. Well, there's some angry people when look at my comments. Some of the comments I understood. Some of the comments were stupid as hell to me. Uh, and just about my comments in general, guys, I know I am like two weeks behind on responding to everybody's comments. I am so, so sorry. Uh, I'm not going to make any excuse. Well, I mean, I feel like I had it. Well, I just need to get to it. Let's just say that. But Superfly came in at 16 million. No, the budget was 16 million dollars, right? Uh, it was directed by Director X, who has a lot of music videos. Uh, so they need to make at least $48 million to make a respectable profit. Now, I want the movie to be profitable, but at the same time, I want it to bomb. Now, let me tell you why. Reasons why I want the film to be profitable is because I like uh, Jason Mitchell. He was Easy e in uh, Straight Outta Compton. He was also in the Kong movie. I don't want actors that I like, especially if they're black, for all their movies to bomb because that goes, that's a part of their resume in the future when they try to negotiate salary. You know, if somebody can be like, hey, all of my movies have made money. Every time I'm in a movie, it makes, you know, we make a profit. Okay, they're going to get a higher paycheck. You know, um, so that's that. So that's why I do want it to make money. But at the same time, I do not want it to make money because I necessarily don't care for movies like this uh, being made to where we're depicted as, you know, drug dealers and, and, and just, you know, just ne just all type of negative stereotypes or whatever. And so many people in uh, my comment section felt they were like, man, this is uh, making us go backwards. You know, we have Black Panther where we were perceived as royalty and kings and queens. And, you know, we was able to talk to our ancestors. We had such a rich, diverse, lovely culture, you know, but now it's nothing but bitches and hoes and drugs and guns and a bunch of, you know, ignorance. I haven't seen every single comment on my Superfly video, but I see a majority of them. And guys, I understand your frustration. I really do. And even in my interview, not my interview, I'm talking about my review for Superfly, um, I went in with my expect, uh, I started the video with my expectations and I was like, you know, it's, it's interesting because I'm on the fence because, you know, white people, they can have their films to where they're being perceived negatively like Ocean's 8. It's nothing but women robbing people, stealing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They're not stereotyped that way or Ocean's 12 or, you know, you have Scarface and, you know, all these other films where white people can be perceived all these, but they have balance. You know, they have power. Um, you know, uh, black people, we don't have balance. We don't have power in this country. We are broke. We are poor. You know, the uh, if you look at the Federal Reserve data that is released every 30, not 30 years, every three years, uh, black people... The average black person in this country only has four thousand dollars liquid when you take away the family car. And if you take away all of our uh, other material possessions that drops down to like fifteen hundred bucks, which sucks. It's not our fault. Black people, that is not your fault. I, um, it's not. A lot of you know that. A lot of you don't. And um, I think, OK, it's 2018. If something doesn't change now, like by the two by the year 2050, that will drop down to zero. Um, and I think for Hispanic families, um, I think it'll take around to 2070, 
Brendan, you know, why am I saying all this? I mean, I, I get it because of, you know, the stereotypes and things uh, are like that. And uh, like I was saying, I'm just saying like white people, they have balance because they can be perceived that way. But they can also be you know perceived as doctors and lawyers and judges and, you know, uh, good policemen or women, you know, or just positive roles. But, you know, for some reason, no matter what black people do. Uh, we're always going to be perceived as gangsters and thugs and hoes and, and bitches and, and niggas and, you know, things like that. So I get everybody's frustration about the film. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you're going to feel that way, should we, we? I mean, I think that you have to also separate yourself from all other parts of black culture as well. That's not 100 percent, you know, productive or uplifting. I mean, I'm a. Fan. I'm not a diehard fan of Beyonce, but, you know, I like her music. But at the same time, everything that she puts out is not just, you know, you know, the pinnacle of, of optimism and, and all that good stuff. Jay-Z or whoever else, you know, we've been having these movies for a long time. New Jack City, uh, you know, Paid in Full, which is even more recently, Belly and things like that. Guys, you know, I get it. Now, at the same time, uh, I'm going to say something that a lot of black people are just not going to like me to say, but it's the truth. Uh, and I, it's, I, I got, you know, I, I'm sure to share my audience is diverse. I, I'm pretty sure I have more black people than, um, than any other group just because the views, the videos that I got the most views out of, they are about black stuff. But, you know, it's probably some white people like, what the hell is he talking about? But, so I have to agree with somebody, one comment, I forgot his name, but he was just like, man, black people, stop worrying about all the stereotypes. And I know it's hard to do that because, you know, if, if I mean, uh, at one point in the news, it was a brother with dreads and he had on glasses and some women walked up to him recently, about a year ago or something like that, just like, you know, uh, she just walked to him like, hey, you look like a thug or something like that. He was like, I'm on my way to get my third doctors or something like that. Or, you know, you remember when uh, the guy on the news was trying to get into his own car. He locked himself out the car. I think he was like a teacher at a junior college or something. And he got tackled to the ground. So no matter what we do, we're going to be perceived this way. But at the same time, you have to try your best not to care about what others think, especially what white people think. Because, you know, we're con this is like Kanye, Kanye, Kanye West has been tripping lately. Right. And I know this is far off from the box office, but hey, it is what it is. I want to talk about this. Uh, he tripped, Kanye tripping now, but just like he said a few years ago in this song, you know, since birth, they programmed ourselves, they progressed us to hate ourselves and love their wealth. You know what I'm saying? Like hate ourselves and love white people's wealth. You know, uh, what did they say? Phil on the advice show was like, you know, the white man's ice is always colder. And, you know, that affects black people because we care so much about what white people think, you know, and it's not our fault. What has been done to us is profound and multifaceted. So don't beat yourself up or beat me up in the comment section for saying this is the truth. You know, uh, you're not going to like what I have to say when I'm going to say this as well. But we are all sick. Black people are sick, you know, in this country. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's not our fault. We've been conditioned to think a certain way and live a certain way since birth. Um, I remember a few years ago, I was working with a Nigerian young woman that came over here to the country when she was like 21 years old. She's 29 now or 30 now. But she said to me one day, we don't work together anymore. Brandon, I didn't know that there was a problem being black until I came, you know, from America. And she kind of retracted some of her statements because she was just like, B, why can't be black Americans get their shit together? It's like, well, you could go over to Nigeria and they just be predominantly black. And you can be a self-culture and dance and do all this and do all that and be loved for it over here. If, you know, we try to so damn ghetto and this and that and da 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 but I just said out to say, guys, I understand all of y'all's frustration in the comment section of Superfly. But at the same time, uh, we have to stop caring about the stereotypes as as, as best that we can. And um, I hate to well, I'm gonna bring politics in this a little bit. Ever since 45 came into office, uh, I am not a Donald Trump supporter at all by far. No, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad that he is the president in a way. Because for one, it really can't get that much worse for black people. I mean, you know, but I'm I'm glad because he is revealing the curtain of how a lot of Americans really feel or whatever. And by doing that, it is uniting black people on all fronts and nine levels of activity of all nine levels of human activity. And people are becoming more conscious and aware of their situation and what the future holds. So that's great. But what I've noticed and when I was talking to a friend of mine, Dr. Aaron Johnson, you know, he would just saying in this new consciousness that people are, you know, um, uh, waking up to, they're hypersensitive to 
uh, every thing that every way that we're depicted and that's great but at the same time we take it a little bit too far you know what i'm saying um and the reason i also said use the word conscious because um now i am not a part of the conscious community um i am not knocking anyone in that community i am just not a part of it so just because i use the word conscious i don't want somebody like oh be here in the conscious community no i am not um i do not believe in their core beliefs but hey it is what it is. If you're part of the conscious community, hey, that's that's you. You know what I'm saying? You know, more power to you. Uh, that's your prerogative. I'm not knocking you there. Um, but I, I have noticed that there is a hypersensitivity to, um, you know, how we're depicted. And, you know, I don't blame you. Now, I have seen Superfly. Um, it is not as bad as what you think because in the film, they are not glorifying that lifestyle. They make it very clear from the very, they didn't make it seem like, man, sell coke, sell crack, you know, do drugs, beat up women, da 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 da. You know, this is the best life, you know, F a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, 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 what was the saying? It's like, uh, somebody was like, you know, um, I can't remember the saying, but anyway, it's not glorifying the lifestyle. You know, you have Trevor Jackson, the young brother, 21 years old. Um, you know, he wants to get out. He doesn't disrespect women in the movie at all. Uh, he respects the opinion of women, uh, in the film. He doesn't, like I say, doesn't mistreat anybody. I don't even think he holds a gun in the whole, no. He doesn't shoot at anybody in the whole movie. He does fire a gun, but it's at a shooting range and every, you know, so, um, you know, his two girlfriends, one was a waitress or a hostess. The other one was an art curator. Um, even there's a group of people in this, in the movie Superfly called the Snowbirds. They look stupid as hell and all white, you know, but hey, some people may think the shirt, gray shirt I had on looks stupid, but there was one, uh, 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 dark chocolate brother in there. His acting wasn't the best, but even him in there was like, man, we got to rid of all the dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? You have to make better choices. Even Trevor Jackson, in this movie Priest, he was just like, look, man, if you're gonna live this life, don't be going out there buying those six hundred thousand dollar watches, being all flashy. One little mistake like this is gonna put you away. So he was intelligent. I mean, this was not just some crackhead dope dealer or whatever. But anyway, guys, that was such so, such long winded. I just had to say all of that and. Talk talk about Superfly because there were just so many opinions uh, in the movie. So I don't know what the film is going to do. I mean, if it makes money, hey, I mean, it's pros and cons. If it makes money, that looks good on um, on Trevor Jackson and uh, Jason Mitchell's resume, uh, you know, you know, but in, if it doesn't make money, you know, their paychecks will be lower. But at the same time, Sony, and they won't make any more movies like that. But anyway, um, I just had to get that off my chest. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, for all of that good stuff. Now, um, something else that I did want to talk about uh, with the uh, opening weekend showdown. This is uh, the biggest openings of all time with Star Wars The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, The Avengers, The Last Jedi, The Black Panther, and Avengers Infinity War. Now, um, Avengers Infinity War most likely will not surpass Black Panther at the domestic box office. Um, that's great because hey a movie where people look like me gonna be the most as you know hey we don't got nothing let me hang on to that and uh i'm also address the the data that I, I did too let me make a verbal cue here so i don't forget because it's very important i got an assignment for everybody that's watching this whether if you're black you need to be teaming up if you're white hey man if you're cool and you're down and you want to be an ally and help black people out hey I'm not going to push you away, but uh, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But uh, Black Panther on the day to day is has now surpassed uh, Infinity War. So I'm thinking Avengers Infinity War is going to make maybe around six hundred and eighty million dollars domestically. Uh, that's not what I tried to do. Let me go back to daily and then let me click by day number. OK, so when I look at. Uh, Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War and it's in both films 52 day of release uh, Black Panther is a 665 million and Avengers Infinity War is a 664 million so Black Panther is far along for more far along in it's 52 day so most likely it is going to be making more at the domestic box office Disney that is your downfall I'm not going to blame you for not putting more Black Panther in the movie I'll give you that. But for releasing Star, this is, you're losing because you wanted to release Star Wars, the solo Star Wars story, um, right 
right next to Avengers Defending World, which is stupid and problematic. I hope y'all learned uh, your lesson. Now, something that I was not able to talk about uh, last week because I didn't do a video, so I couldn't talk about it. But Avengers Infinity War, baby, and this is old news to everybody, is at $2 billion, man, worldwide. Foreign is with 1.3 million. Domestic, we talked about that, 664 million. And, uh, you know, that's dope. The only thing that is beating it is um, Avatar, Titanic, and also... Um, uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, excuse me, I almost lost my train of thought. So yes, yeah, the number four. So right now, Avengers Infinity War has joined the $2 billion club. Uh, only four films in cinematic history have made that. Uh, the only other th film that I think can get remotely close to that is Avengers 4. Or maybe Black Panther 2. But yeah, that's not even on a release schedule right now, Black Panther 2, but that's going to be coming. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about that. And let me also look at the... Um, I could look at the adjusted for inflation, but it hasn't changed. You know, Black Panther is still at number 30. Uh, Avengers Infinity War is at number uh, 35. So that's not going to change there. And let me see if there is any other thing um, that I want to look at. Oh, oh also, uh, where's Rampage at? Where's Rampage at? Rampage, where you at? Uh, okay, yeah, Rampage. Uh, I because I really like that film, guys. Uh, it's at 421 million worldwide, so that's pretty good there. Um, uh, you know, not the best, but not bad. And then, you know, Truth or Dare, that was just another film that was on my radar because it's Blumhouse and it's just so dang cheap, man. I mean, I am not mad at that formula or whatever. It's probably not even in theaters anymore. I can't even see it right now on uh, this thing, but uh, anyway, guys. Oh, oh, also, uh let me just close it out real quick. Uh, I probably may lose some subscribers talking about this. About Superfly. Man, if, okay, you know, most likely, uh, just some real talk, you know, no matter what we do, you know, we're going to be stereotyped as uh, in a negative light or whatever, uh, or viewed that way. Uh, but my question to you, my challenge to you is what are you willing to do about it? How are you engaging the space? How are you helping your community? Now, realistically, uh, we know how the the polling turned out with, um, you know, 2016's presidential elections. And may, people may be like, oh, you know, there's there's no point of voting. I mean, uh, so-and-so won a popular vote by this much, but this still happened. Well, uh, get involved get, get involved locally, okay? Because realistically, you can change something in your community. Like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you, what are you doing to rid of the stereotypes? You know what I'm saying? And it, it's not our fault. You know, I'm not. Nothing is our fault, and and as far as this is concerned. But w what can we do today? Now, I'm pretty sure some of you have heard of Dr. Boyce Watkins. Uh, I was a big fan of his a few years ago when I um, discovered him. Uh, my views have changed just a little bit. I'm not going to um, say anything good about the man, but I'm not going to say anything bad about the man either. But uh, I will say, if you're going to listen to him, uh, also listen to somebody that pro provides data as well, because I don't think that he looks at that. I could be wrong. But if you have a pen, write this down. Dr. Boyce Watkins dot net is Dr. B O Y C E Watkins.net. Go to that, put in your email address, and they will send you a free book called uh, It Takes a Village. It's only like 50 to 55 pages. So you can read that in the evening. Uh, that will help a lot of you out because I'm just going off the comment section. I can tell a lot where a lot of people are coming from, um, a lot of people's mental state. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, like, guys, what are you doing? You know, uh, I mean, we you, you, we can be keyboard warriors all day. Or we can get together. Do you want our net worth to go down to zero, zero in 2050? Do you want to continue to be depicted as, as, as in the negative light? You know, where, uh, you know, I mean, this video is too long. But, uh, yeah, guys, like, what, what, are you, what are you doing about it? Okay. Uh, what what are you doing? What can you do about it? You know what what are you doing with your money? What are you what are you doing politically? Uh, I mean, I have so much to say. Depending on, I have so much more to say, but this video is long enough. But depending on my comments, will determine whether I want to um, go even further deeper into our plight and the way we're perceived and 
and all that good stuff in Hollywood and, you know, all that good stuff. But guys, that is just my opinion on the box office weekend, the results, the numbers, the actual numbers. Also, uh, my thoughts on Superfly and the, and the, and the uh, fight for black people and all that good stuff. You know, you know, that's why I'm always like, go black people and stuff. If you go back to my Charlie reaction for the purge and uh, and uh, Black Panther and stuff, because when you look at the data and stuff, you know, hey, we're poor. And um, it's, it's, it's not our fault. It was against the it was literally against the law for black people to own a home up until like 1974, you know, for our parents and grandparents to pass that wealth down to us when it was. I mean, what kind of, you, you know, yeah, America's great. No, we, we couldn't own a home. It was illegal. You know what the hell? So I'm just very passionate about that. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. What did you think about my box office rundown and my thoughts on Superfly and all that good stuff? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Please let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing and make it an intelligent comment please um also guys um you can go to uh you can also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff it's right there at the bottom of the screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again uh for tuning in to my opinion slash review of the box office results and superfly and all that good stuff and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace